Hi, I'm Sherry Damaris and welcome to Macro Magic. And today I have with me Michelle Dirks. She's a chef, author, and teacher of macrobiotics, and her company is called Food and Herbs as Medicine. So welcome, Michelle. Thank so you. So happy to have you back on the show. Um, today you have some exciting new um, remedies you're going to show us, and you always do such a beautiful job in the kitchen in prepping all these things. Thank you. It's been really exciting, and yes, I would like to demonstrate fire cider. And as everybody knows right now, we're in a massive cold chill out there. And this is when we really need to support our immune system, where we need to also boost our immune system. So how do we do that? Um, and also, we're not getting outside that much. So fire cider is a delicious, uh, not only immune booster, but improves circulation, helps you with brain fog. The actual um, horseradish that we're using in it really helps um, move stagnation, helps you with your sinuses. So we're just going to go through a little um, demo on how to make it and what everything does. So initially we start with onion, okay? So just a small onion is absolutely perfect. And the way we cut it is we dice it. So this is an onion that's cut. Um, I'm only going to use like half of this onion. So how you cut the onion is when the onion has its top and it has its roots, you just cut it right across here, okay? And then we are going to dice it. So we'll just, because we'll be dicing the other ingredients, um, so the ingredients are onion, horseradish, this is ginger and turmeric, then we have um, blood orange and lemon, and we have rosemary and some cayenne pepper. So, um, a lot of hot items. <laughs> a lot of hot items. Great for, great for cold and flu season. So as I try to peel this onion, great for cold and flu season and great to break up any mucus this time of year. Mm. Also, if you feel a little worn down from just stagnation or sitting too much, this really helps to um, make you feel really, really alive. Um, Everybody knows about <laughs> turmeric. <laughs> turmeric is really, really good for any anti-inflammatory issues. Um, onion, again, as, as everybody knows, is good for sinuses and colds. The old traditional remedies were, um, you know. So this is steamer. great to open up your sinuses. Great to open up your sinuses. Okay. Great to open up your chest and also great to open up any mucus that's stuck in your lungs, okay? Oh, wow. So it is also really, really delicious to taste. You can add it into um, your dressings. You can add it into your stews. There's a lot of people who are adding, actually adding some into their marinara sauces, uh, even into their drink and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have your vodka with a chaser or something like that. So these are the ingredients just here. So not many people know, uh, they know what horseradish is, but they don't know what it looks like, okay? So horseradish is a root. It grows in very, um, stony, sandy soil, uh, doesn't need very good, um, doesn't need very good soil to tell you the truth because it pretty much will go anywhere. The tall, tall green leaves grow very, very tall and as I've been told it is better to harvest it uh, right after the first frost. So you will actually see horseradish in your health food stores right now because it's well after our first frost, but it's still, they're still harvesting it. So horseradish has a very bitter taste. It's a taste that we're not used to, and it's a taste that we don't get in our diets anymore, and it's actually very, very important. So the great thing about fire cider, it has all the different tastes. It has a sour, it has a sweet, it has a bitter, it has the pungent. Um, so it's really really, really quite delicious. And as anybody who's studied Chinese medicine or the actual organs, you have a taste that goes with each organ system in each season. So, so this is really good for the heart, right? Yeah, it'd be really bitter. good for the heart. That bitter, mm -hmm. pungent, sharp, that sharp taste is really, really good. Ginger improves circulation. So, and everybody says, oh my gosh, do I have to peel it? Well, actually what I do is I grate it. 
So everything over here is grated, and I just wanted to show everybody it in its... So do you take the skin off for the horseradish? If it's organic, I do not okay. take the skin off. I just rub it with a little bristle brush, and that's really all you can do. Mm -hmm. The same is, um, this is dry ginger. Um, sorry, not dried, it's fresh ginger. But the skin has dried. If you see ginger that is fresh, it's actually very pink. And it has the most beautiful, beautiful color. And the skin, you can just grate it without having the skin on. This means it's just aged a little bit. But if you buy organic ginger, please do not get rid of the, <laughs> the skin. You can just grate half a cup of this. So it's half a, half a cup of horseradish root, half a cup of um, ginger, half a cup of turmeric. It is half a cup of, oh, sorry, eight or nine cloves of garlic, one onion, one lemon, and a few sprigs of garlic two cayenne pepper, and our apple cider vinegar, which is great for your microbiome. It's fermented, and everybody will kind of think, what is on the bottom of this? But this is actually the mother, okay? So the apples are set in, wa in uh, water, and they're fermented at a certain temperature. And after the fermentation happens, it is just fermented a little bit longer, and then you will see little strands of the mother on the bottom. And this means you have totally organic cider that works perfectly wonderful with your microbiome. And again, our microbiome is so important at this time uh, for our immune system. And also, not only that, it's, um, I have a nice saying <laughs> and I usually say healthy soil healthy plant healthy me and then I say healthy microbiome healthy body healthy me so it basically works like that so it's really really important to eat really good food um, and everything I try to get is organic so um, cayenne pepper is being dried since the summer and with cayenne pepper I just want to explain a bit. You, if I cut this right now and dried, I will take the seeds out. If I put my fingers towards my eye, it will burn my, my eye. Um, so it's really important to wear gloves or be really careful to wash your hands after you use dried cayenne pepper. And so we have and the we're going to post the, your recipe up on the mm -hmm. um, blog of my website, Kiss Your Plate, so you can follow along with the directions and the written recipe. And rosemary is absolutely wonderful for brain, um, again, skin and hair. So um, during COVID uh, in March, I started making an incredible amount of um, apple cider, sorry, cider, <laughs> fire cider. And I started giving it to everybody and anybody. And a friend of mine, she's 76, and she came to me and she said, Michelle, my hair, I've been having such issues since my early 20s with my hair, and I've had children, and thought, okay, my hair is my hair. And she said, after a bottle, I just, my hair started to grow like crazy. It's the only thing <laughs> I did. And I am thinking to myself, well, what? Is happening here and I think it's because we it improves the circulation if there's any inflammation happening it helps to alleviate that it's just a really wonderful tonic and you hear all over Europe everywhere that uh, during this time of year people will take bitters there's something called Swedish bitters there's other you know um, wonderful things that you can take so this is just a wonderful um, Does it taste really hot when you drink it? It depends. So um, I have this with turmeric, and I didn't make it so hot because I actually wanted a little bit more of that orange lemon flavor. Mm. So it's up to you to start looking at how you want to make it. Elderberry is wonderful in there. Some people put um, a cinnamon stick. Some people put, actually for vitamin C, rose hips or hawthorn berries. Mm. And that's absolutely amazing. And that's for the vitamin C. And of course, you have tons of vitamin C because of what you're adding in here. So you're just letting, putting these all together and fermenting them, right? We're you're not ferment, cooking them nope. or boiling them nope, or anything? No, it's easy peasy. So we're going mm. to just uh, put the rest in here. Mm. And we'll take this over here. And this is our horseradish, so it turns quite white. It's making my eyes I water. know, it's like so <laughs> amazing. Okay. It's beautiful colors. Yeah, the colors are absolutely gorgeous together. And 
if you add the elderberry in there or the um, rose hip, you're going to get a deeper, deeper shade of color. Mm. So what you do is you will um, pour apple cider vinegar over all of this <laughs> <laughs> and ferment for a month, okay? Oh for and four don't weeks. let your cat drink it. <laughs> and don't let your cat drink it. And if it has a metal top, because I shake it now and again, okay? This is a metal top. Just change to a plastic top, all right? And because what that does is you don't want the metal metallic energy going into your food. Okay, so, so we have the onions, the horseradish, and, the, and the garlic. And then now we're going to add the ginger and the turmeric. Is there a specific order it has to be layered? Uh, no, but I, okay. I probably thought about it. Um, you could do it in an order. I was just do, going from probably smaller to bigger or more. Okay. And then this gorgeous color is here. Cover it with apple cider vinegar. You have to make sure that everything is covered. So these are blood oranges and And lemons. just a lemon. Again, all organic. That's why I have the, I just rinsed off the, um, the outside and scrubbed it with a little brush. Okay, and... So how much cider vinegar will one jar give you? Like how many glasses of So this cider? will give me, um, how many jars? So this will give me about 15 of these. Hmm. And I add some other things into mine as well. So this, you're beginning to sell these, right? I am selling it and nice. it's really, really exciting. And I'm also demonstrating these in my classes. So we're just going to put a one cayenne pepper. Just one more hot item. <laughs> Into the fire cider. <laughs> Into the fire cider. Um, I actually did this in, um, I, because I'm from Ireland, I really wanted to actually have an Irish spin to it. So <laughs> I called a bunch of people and I said, how, what's fire cider in Irish? And they said, oh, it's called Ula Te. So Ula means apple, Te means hot. Oh. And so it's called apple hot. <laughs> so apple hot. Sure apple hot. hot. <laughs> so let's do this. Do we not put the rosemary in? We can put the rosemary in after I just, oh. just absolutely fill this to the and top. And use Bragg's, which is a pretty decent organic. And again, exactly, it's an organic. I'm just going to shake this for a second to get all of that. Now, some okay. people are, are taking a teaspoon of apple cider every morning for during COVID. Is that something you recommend? I think that is a little bit... Um, just, I think the apple cider vinegar might be a little bit extreme. I would mix it with water. Um, mm -hmm. Or what I would do is have something like this and mix it in water. And it's actually quite delicious. Um, just half a cup of water with some fire cider in there is so absolutely it's good delicious. you dilute it you dilute just don't it. drink this yeah stuff. and i really really like it in dressing so a lot of people mm. use apple cider vinegar in dressing but when you have it like this it's absolutely packed full of <laughs> minerals and nutrients and amazing in your salad amazing just sprinkle so sometimes i actually put it into a spray bottle and spray it on my vegetables you and my... You can smell it already. I know. Isn't that amazing? We're going to take a commercial break. and we come back, we're going to learn more about fire cider, but also thieves vinegar and sauerkraut and sour dough bread. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek.
sidewalks built for fun. Legendary rock and roll clubs. This is how we do it. Hip hop. Casinos by the ocean. Hip hop. Now that's New Jersey. 130 miles of beautiful beaches, solid rock, and everything in between. <laughs> now that's New Jersey. Plan your New Jersey trip at visitnj.org. Waves of fun. Nights of excitement. And a trail of memories. Now that's New Jersey. What will make your event simply beautiful? Is it your attire? Your decorations? Your entertainment? Well, join me, Alicia Simone, as I chat with some amazing vendors and clientele who will share their stories and images and their experiences. Right here on RVN TV, Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. and Wednesday at 4 p.m. It will be simply beautiful. See you then. Hi, I'm Sherry Damaris and welcome back to Macro Magic. I have Michelle Dirks here with us and we just made fire cider. And um, we're gonna look at uh, making thieves vinegar and also some steamed bread with homemade sauerkraut. That's correct, yes. So just to finish up about our fire cider, this has been it sitting for an absolute, for a month. So once it's sitting for about a month and shaking it regularly, okay? And the liquid sort of goes down mm -hmm. in it, Absolutely. Right? Okay. So when you strain it, you want to strain the actual plant medicine that's in it as well, okay? Any little ingredients you want in here, you're going to strain that out. You're not going to throw it out. You're going to put it through a strainer or a cheesecloth and just gently squeeze out any of the nutrients that are in there okay and once you've done that taste it see what it's like and if you really really like it that taste which is it'll be a sharp hot taste wonderful but if you want it sweet add some honey organic honey until you get the sweetness you want bottle it up whatever way you want and you have your fabulous fire cider how hot is it like when you you know just put it on your tongue does it burn your tongue no, it doesn't burn your tongue. What you feel is like heat dissipating through your esophagus and you feel like this. You feel like you're alive. That's all I can tell you. It's just wonderful. It's wonderful. And there's another vinegar that you can do too, and that's called thieves vinegar. And thieves vinegar for thieves, people probably have heard of thieves oil. Well, in the plague or during the plague, um, they were wondering why these robbers, the grave robbers, were not getting sick. And a bunch of doctors questioned them and they were actually putting a bunch of herbs together. And that was wormwood. Wormwood is a really antifungal, antibacterial, and I'm going to use it dried. And this is my <laughs> thieves vinegar that I have here. So what they discovered is they started making this and they it obviously helped during the plague. They absolutely pinned it all over Paris. Uh, every doctor would give it to their patients and everybody started making these vinegar. So again, it is an immune booster. You wouldn't drink it like, <laughs> like fire cider, but it is wonderful um, in a little bottle. You can get these pretty much everywhere. Um, and I carry this with me and a few drops in your mouth and you feel absolutely amazing. So what are the ingredients? The ingredients are wormwood. Okay. So this is 
This is wormwood. Mm -hmm. This is sage. Okay, so dried sage. And it's a quarter cup of each. This is peppermint. And this is, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what that is, rosemary. Okay. And then this is lavender here. Wow, you okay. put lavender in it. Lavender in and lemon balm. Okay, so this is dried lemon balm here. So this is what we're going to do. And all you need is your nice jar. And, and you need to turn off your stove. I do, yeah. Oh, here. So we're just looking for our jar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here again, because I'm using vinegar, it's a plastic lid that I'm using. And we're just going to put all of these wonderful ingredients, okay? Kids, kids can make these remedies, so right? So wonderful. Easy. You can just look at all the antifungal, antibacterial, antivirus herbs that are around, and there's many of them, and say, oh my gosh, I'd love to try that. I, you know, absolutely. Lemon balm, for example, is absolutely wonderful for stress release, anti-anxiety. Uh, depression. Um, wormwood has kind of more of a magical lore to it, so that's very exciting to look into. And then you have um, lavender, which no, is absolutely I only beautiful. take baths in lavender. I don't think I ever drank or ate lavender Well, before. this is really interesting. Here in, in Chester County, where I'm from, they actually, somebody has a lavender farm, and it is absolutely gorgeous. And she makes lavender hydrosol, and what they do with the hydrosols is um, if you have any uh, cuts or bruises, it heals it very, very quickly. Hmm. Not only that, the lavender essential oil, if you burn, it is really important to put it on straight away. We hear about other things, but lavender mm. essential oil was used quite a bit in Europe, okay? So we're gonna add lemon balm and peppermint in here. Peppermint, again, is very, very uplifting. And... Yeah, they were saying peppermint tea is very good for headaches. Yes, it is, thing. it's wonderful. And it's just wonderful um, if you're feeling down, it's just wonderful to give you a really nice pick-me-up. Um, peppermint tea is just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm, again, I'm adding in organic apple cider in here, and all we're gonna do is cover it, but you could add a few bunches of cloves, okay? And you just cover it. We might need to press it down. You could add in a little That's cayenne beautiful. pepper. And beautiful. it just looks so, so, so lovely. And I'm just gonna gently press this down. Uh, that's for the, so we just press this down. That's what I'm doing. Okay. And so we, we want to post that recipe up on our blog at kissyourplate.com. And um, move on to your sauerkraut because we have about yep. five minutes. So, so here we, we go wanna... with that. And you just sit it aside, strain it out just like you would your fire cider, and you've got a wonderful tonic, okay? So again, another great immune booster, sauerkraut. Fermentation is wonderful for the microbiome. So this is with cabbage, okay, shredded cabbage. You can shred it with a knife if you want, cut it with a knife, very, very thin, or you can find a nice shredder, all right? So what we have is juniper berries, and juniper mm. berries are the actual, they're not really berries, they're the cone of the juniper tree, okay? An evergreen, beautiful, used in, um, all over Europe for endless years for, sorry, endless hundreds of years for food preservation, okay? Um, it's been used in... So mixing these in with sauerkraut is interesting instead of just making plain sauerkraut. Yes, and I think because the juniper berries are great for um, preserving, the caraway seeds are great in fiber, and we're using organic. Um, this is uh, one and a half teaspoons of salt. Mm -hmm. okay. I usually put one tablespoon per Tables head of cabbage. Okay, that's exactly right. So this mm -hmm. is a head of cabbage. So mm -hmm. what I do, okay, is you're breaking down the membrane of the actual cabbage, okay? The liquid's going to come out as the membrane inside the cabbage is being released and broken down, okay? And you actually see the liquid coming out, yeah. and then when you press it down, um, even more liquid comes out. So and that's honestly, really people think that this is so hard to make, but it's not. Here's another sauerkraut that I made, and this is with um, turmeric, okay? So you could add a little bit of turmeric nice. in here, or you could add a little bit of turmeric powder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Now, they say sauerkraut has vitamin C, but also is a wonderful food during COVID because it, it grows back all that uh, microbiome that really keeps your immune system strong. It sure does. So I do this a lot in my programs. My programs are called Food and Herbs as Medicine. In uh, April, I will be doing an eight month course. Um, and I'm really, really excited about this because my last class was in Ireland this time last year. My mm -hmm. last inside teaching class. But this will be on Zoom and we'll be going into the garden with me and um, getting to know the herbs and what they do and how to make our own medicine and it's basically self-care major self-care for you and your family okay These so wonderful everybody products. says what do you do with this so you put this in a jar okay you can buy yourself a little weight it doesn't have to be in a huge crock i have seen elaborate things with people with uh, straws coming out or they're moving things all you need is a lid with just a little bit of a of a seal on it okay all right and that's all you need and a weight the most important thing Sometimes is... Sometimes you can just press it into the jar really press tightly, Press it into right? the jar into really, really tightly. This mm -hmm. actually is a whole, pretty much a whole head of cabbage that has shrunk down in the last week. And as you can see, the water, it's really important that the water, that it's actually covered in water. The weight will help press the liquid out further. And if you observe after a few days that there's a little bit of mold or something, just pour it out. It should be okay. Um, if your cabbage gets really, really strange, then you know, well, let's try again. But you haven't lost anything. And it's great to experiment with neighbors, friends, family, and to do this. So basically, we're just going to get So this. we need to wrap up, Michelle. Um, how can people reach you? Um, you're going to pull out some steamed sourdough bread, again, which is a really great, you. great food to serve your sauerkraut on. It is on. wonderful to, sh to serve your sauerkraut on, okay? And not only that, um, you can contact me at treasurehousepress at gmail.com. That's my publishing company. And that's where you can contact me. I'll be doing lots of um, classes. And then this is my fire cider that I make, which is specially made um, and with love and many, many fresh herbs that I've grown over the year, okay? We love your classes, Michelle. You have so much information to share about herbs, about food, is healing. Thank you. Um, the macrobiotic um, way of steaming bread, which is just putting it in a steamer, right? And exactly. Using, um, this is a great brand that's in the Philadelphia area, Sweetwater Baking Company bread, but I'm sure Many of you have your own sourdough breads um, made without yeast, without stabilizers, and without sugar. And what happens when you steam it, you're bringing the moisture back in, so it's actually helping your immune system. It actually helps relax the body. If instead of toasting something for lunch, you have um, steamed bread. Again, don't steam it till it's soggy. I have been showing this to many people in the last few days, and they're very excited about it. You can put tahini on the bottom, hummus on the bottom, um, you can put um, peanut butter on the bottom, okay? And just a little bit of... The sauerkraut and the peanut butter and the hummus are really nice. They are absolutely delicious together, and especially with basil. So I'm adding some basil leaves on top. beautiful colors. Okay. And then if you want to spread some herbs or anything on top, you can do that as well. And it makes a gorgeous, gorgeous sandwich. Mm. Thank you, Michelle, for being on the show. We love you so much. You have so many great Thank ideas you. for making herbal <laughs> remedies and cooking beautiful food. And we hope that many people go to your website and um, buy your products and sign up for classes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sherry. And we hope to have you next time on the show. So join us for another episode of Macro Magic soon.